You're listening to FOJC Radio, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and teaching the doctrine of Christ to the whole world. Good evening and welcome to Friday Night FOJC Remnant Gathering. Grab your Bible and your pens and your paper, and when two or three are gathered in His name, the Lord is right here with us. So thank you for joining us, and here's Brother David. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the July 30th, 2021 edition of the FOJC Remnant Gathering. I am David Carey Cohen. For the next hour, we're going to be studying the Word of God. So thankful, as always, for all of you that are joining us for our study. And our study for this evening is entitled, The Barren State. The Barren State. And we're so thankful to be able to share that with you all. Um... As always, we have a lot of things to pray about, and we are just so thankful for our prayer team. We make mention of uh, a few requests each week over the air, and I, I just want to give a big shout out to Chaz and Mara and Vicki, and also uh, Rusty Carter and his family, who are take very serious praying over these requests, and it's to the point where... Uh, we just need that help, and the Lord provided it. And also, a big shout out to uh, uh, Tracy and Zoe, who have been helping Donna here at Ground Zero a lot, and uh, Lisa. Lisa. And uh, we have never been blessed with so much fellowship and support in our life. And we are just so thankful for that and for all the blessings that the Lord is pouring out. Oh, yeah, and I want to give a shout-out tonight to Adam in Poland. Uh, We got a call this week that said, out of area, and boy, was it. It was Adam over there in Poland. So, hey, Adam, we're glad you're listening over there in Poland, as we have listeners all over. And we want to also, we want to make uh, mention uh, this week for Rhonda P. for healing, uh, for Linda for more cancer healing, and we have just really been, uh, our heart has really been touched um, in interceding and praying for Linda. Bless your heart, Linda. We have really had you upon our heart. Um, For Levi, for wisdom and guidance, and uh, there is a man pestering a family. (laughs) <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, this uh, harassment, the devil loves to harass people. And uh, harassment is aggravating. And this is one of the devil's biggest tools. And boy, I tell you what, we have plenty of trolls here that would harass and come against us. And that now you see TV and a lot of them here recently uh, against us and against John Pounders and John Hall. They've been very, very serious. Uh, threats of uh, death and physical harm. So keep us in mind, and you know, all of us in prayer and all of these people, harassment is the tool of the devil. You know, he is the evil one. Those are the works of darkness he uses. He wants to distract God's people and keep them to where their mind isn't focused. But we know that he is just a liar. And um, we know where he is going to wind up. So we're going to take these requests with a a thankful heart. And also, uh, I told some of our friends we've talked with this week that I was going to do a section uh, in this teaching tonight on the Salem witch trials. And as I kept looking into this and looking into this, there's so much, uh, Lord willing, next Friday night, we're going to do an entire teaching on the Salem witch trials. And it is amazing uh, the lessons that we can learn from this and the applications. And this was Satan's attack against the Puritans in Massachusetts in the 1600s. And we're going to see that uh, Satan does the same things over and over. And he can do that because he usually gets away with it. But every once in a while, there's a group of people that figure out his tactics, and uh, he just doesn't get away with it. So we'll learn some things from history next week, hopefully, as we study 
uh, on the Salem witch trials. But let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, we do thank you so much once again to be able to lift these requests up to you. And Father, we just pray a tremendous blessing upon Adam and Poland and upon all of our listeners that are throughout the earth. We just ask your blessings upon them and we thank you so much that you have turned their heart toward us. And Father, we want to pray for Rhonda P. that needs healing and also for Linda in healing for cancer. And Father, in Jesus' name, we just pray that you just touch these sisters by the mighty name of Jesus, by the blood shed upon Calvary's cross. We just pray, Father, that you just send your healing touch into them and send that spiritual touch to encourage them in that which they are going through. And we just want to pray for Levi, for wisdom and for guidance. And we just want to pray for um, this mom that is being pestered by this guy. You know, and I tell you what, I just, uh, I have no use for trolls. And uh, I know that you don't either, Father. So we just pray that you intercede in this situation and that you just move. So, Father, we just want to thank you for all your goodness that you show toward us. And we just want to lift these requests up unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we agree. Amen and amen. Worship the Lord for just a few moments. And we will be back with our teaching for this evening. We're sorry, but because of copyright rules, you cannot hear my music. However, if you want to hear the message in its entirety with my music, you can join us on the radio page on Friday nights for the live audio broadcast at 6 p.m. Central Time, or you can listen on our podcast page at fojcradio.com. Here's Brother David. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Exodus, chapter 17. We're going to begin in verses 6 and 7. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massah, and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord saying is the Lord among us or not and in scripture these became known as the waters of strife because this is where the children of Israel contended with Moses and with the father and the the Lord provided water from the rock for the children of Israel in the wilderness and the wilderness state is a metaphor that's used in the book of Revelation for God's people in the end time that are fleeing from the dragon. And it's the state now of those, if you have come out of Babylon, you are now experiencing the second exodus and you are in the wilderness if you will and the lord indeed once again is going to provide water for us out of the rock and he is indeed doing that now now in the book of numbers chapter 20 beginning in verse 8 there was another episode concerning the water and the rock Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock now what did Moses do wrong the father told him to speak into the rock but now Moses had to say am I going to have to do this and because Moses sinned uh, in verse 11 and Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod he smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel you see we must sanctify the Lord 
and we must set him apart as the one that does anything good in regard to the putting forth of the kingdom. The Lord will build his church, and therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. And uh, this was, uh, a lot of people think this was too harsh, but, you know, it was not. With great responsibility, uh, there came uh, great uh, responsibility. So Moses did not get to enter into the promised land. He died on uh, the other side of the Jordan. But these spiritual waters are something that we really want to take a lesson from. And whether or not we are in the barren state depends upon whether we have that spiritual water flowing from the throne into us. And let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 47. And in this teaching today, we're going to be having help from two of my favorite people, uh, Charles Finney. We're going to be reading several things from him and also from John Flavel. John Flavel, one of the uh, 17th century Puritans, uh, when he was a young man, uh, when the persecution fell upon the Puritans, his father uh, was a minister when he was still uh, quite uh, the youngster, and uh, his father died in prison uh, from the plague uh, for preaching the gospel, and his son John became one of the brightest lights uh, Spurgeon compared John Flavel with uh, George Whitfield and John Bunyan, a very high compliment. But let's read Ezekiel chapter 47 and verse 1. Afterward, he brought me again under the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward to the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Now, we see here, and we studied, we did several teachings on Ezekiel 40 through 48, and we showed that instead of, as is popularly taught, being the Millennial Temple, that this was the temple in the third heaven. And uh, we see here in the temple in the third heaven, and we see this also in the book of Revelation, the waters coming forth. And these living waters are the living waters that Christ offers to us. And in verse 9, whether we are in a barren state or whether while we are in the wilderness we have the, uh, the life of God within us, it depends solely upon... Are we opening ourselves up under these life-giving waters? In verse 9 of Ezekiel 47, And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. You see, this water, the river of water of life, as Jesus said in John 4. In John 7, Jesus said that out of your belly will flow these rivers of living water. And if this water touches you, you live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish because of these waters shall come thither. For they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. And when the new heavens and the new earth are brought down after our Lord's return, these waters which literally flowed into the garden, these from the throne of God, these four rivers flowed into the Garden of Eden, and once again they will flow into the new heaven and the new earth, and that which was lost in the fall will be restored. And these very waters from the throne, this is what the Lord wants to refresh our heart with while we are in this wilderness state. Now, in verse 11, there's something we want to take heed to here in Ezekiel 47. It says, But the miry places thereof and the marshes shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. Now, there were places where when these rivers were flowing out, there were places that were not healed. And there are places in people's heart that they do not want to allow the waters of God to touch and to purify. And these things can become stagnant. They can become vile. They can become putrid. And these are the things that can uh, put a person into the barren state. So when we have the waters of life flowing, 
We will be fruitful in our spiritual life. It will be pure. It will be fresh. But when the waters of life are stifled and there are places, you know, you can have water pool up and it'll get stinky and it'll get mosquitoes on it and it'll get nasty. And this is what it's talking about in Ezekiel. It's given to salt and it creates a barren state. And I think within all of us, if we'll just be honest, there are places in our life that we just don't want to let the water of life go. But you see, this is the thing. When we open up our hearts and we let that water wash and just go into the murky places, the marshes, and those places that are stagnant, it'll bring the water of life and refreshing to us. Now, in verse 19, one more thing here in Ezekiel 47. In verse 19, it says, And the south side southward, from Tamar, and this is talking about the division of the land, and the south side southward from Tamar, even to the waters of Strife and Kadesh, to the rivers of the great sea, and this is the south side southward. Now, this is the boundary that is set, and what I want us to get is that the boundaries was set at the waters of Strife in Kadesh. This was the place where the children of Israel strove with Moses and with the Father. And the place where they strove with the Father, this was the waters of strife, and that was where the boundary was set. You can't go any farther. There's a boundary there. And this is the way that it works in the spiritual realm also. When you begin to strive with the Father and you don't allow the water to come in, and uh, make fresh those places that have become stagnant. This is where your boundary line is thus far and no more. You will proceed no further until you allow that water to enter in and to refresh those stagnant places. Now, I want to read something from John Flavel. And for anyone that might have it, we'll be reading from volume 5 of his works. And I'm going to read something he said here uh, on page 55. And he, oh boy, I tell you what, this just does my heart so much good. You, oh boy. Ah, this is what he said. This river, speaking of the river that comes from the very throne of God that waters us in the barren state, this river is the most fruitful doctrine of Christ. Now, isn't that amazing? I tell you what, I wish we had a few more of these guys around, but I tell you, we got their books, we can read them. But my goodness, this river is the most fruitful doctrine of Christ. I think you could listen to Christian television and radio almost as long as you want and never hear anyone today talk about the doctrine of Christ. The most important thing, as I always say, the doctrine of Christ is the most important thing in your life, whether you know it or not. And this is so true. The river that is flowing from the throne, this is the doctrine of Christ. When we believe the doctrine of Christ, we receive that living water from Christ himself. And what a blessing. That blesses my heart right there. And he goes on to say, he says, this river is the most fruitful doctrine of Christ. Yet these waters do not heal the miry, marshy places. Men that live unfruitfully under ordinances who are compared to miry, marshy places in three respects. And we're going to talk about that. And you see, just like these on the new heaven and the new earth, there's going to be uh, these rivers of waters of life that go out. And from this real actual river, just like as it was in Eden, there's places where there's going to be marshes that are not totally fresh. And when And he compares this to people that are hearing the doctrine of Christ. Now, that's not a very large number anymore, for sure. I wish that were not the case. But when people are listening to the doctrine of Christ and the sound doctrine, and they allow these places to build up in their heart, this is a very dangerous thing. And this creates what Mr. Flavel called uh, the barren state. And we're going to look at some very specific spiritual applications from it. Mr. Flavel goes on to say, When as in a miry place 
the longer the water stands, the worse it grows. So the longer men abide under ordinances, the more filthy and polluted they grow. These are the miry places that cannot be healed. Their disease is incurable, desperate. Oh, this is a sad case and a, and yet very common. Many persons are thus given over as incorrigible and hopeless. Now, it the Lord judges everyone according to the light that they have. And under ordinances, by that, Mr. Flavel means someone that is in a New Testament assembly where they are uh, offering baptism and the Lord's Supper, the ordinance of God being administered underneath the doctrine of Christ. And when a person sits under the truth being preached, and yet they allow these stagnant places to build up into their heart, these can grow, and they can get to where they overtake the entire person. And the results of this are very, very serious indeed. And it can uh, be to the point uh, and we don't even like to think about this, but uh, he's, as Mr. Flavel says, many persons are thus given over as incorrigible and hopeless. Now, let's read some scriptures, and let's see what the Word of God says, which is always the most important thing. And let's look at the book of Revelation, chapter 22, and verse 11. He that is unjust... Let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And when a person dies, uh, their fate is sealed. You know, their their and after a man is appointed unto God once to die, and after this the judgment. But as Mister Flavel um, brought out, uh, people that sit under the truth and refuse to correct that which needs to be corrected this can lead to the barren state of uh, having them re be rejected before they pass from this earth and which of course is a very very serious thing in the book of jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 29 and um our text says here and i think i might want to read a little more here uh well, let's pick it up, verse 27. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people that thou mayest know and try their way. They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanderers. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. The bellows are burned. The lead is consumed to the fire. The founder melteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away." Over and over again, the Father tried to refine them through the prophetic word. They walked with the slanderers and with the corruptors. Reprobate silver shall man call them, because the Lord hath rejected them. Just like you refine metals by burning out the corruptions, these were people when the heat of God's word was applied and the prophetic word came to them, they refused to allow themselves to be purified. Reprobate silver, and they were rejected because they heard the truth, and they did indeed reject it. In Isaiah, in chapter 6, this is the text that Jesus used in Matthew 13 and in other places as he taught with, on the parables, and he was quoting Isaiah chapter 6, and he used this in relation to the Pharisees. In Isaiah 6 and 10, Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land utterly desolate. So this is the thing. Rejection of light and persisting in that which you know the Father wants to correct. This is a dangerous thing. It leads to the barren state. And this is a state that can escalate and take over the entire person. And it can re result in your rejection uh, even before your death. Now, uh, John Flavel, he went on to say this. 
Christ executes the gospel, excuse me, Christ executes by the gospel that curse upon many souls which he denounced against the fig tree. Now think about that for a minute. When the gospel goes forth, you either receive it and you're blessed or you reject it and you are cursed. This is exactly how it works. That's the way the word of the Lord goes forth. He's not taking a vote. You either get in line with God or you do something else. And G- it, Mr. Flavel goes on to say, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. It is a woe to have a bad heart, but it is the depth of woe to have a heart that shall never be made better. And this is what the barren state is. This is a state where someone knows that they have things that they need the water of life to touch, but they choose to live with the stagnant pool rather than have the water of life to come up and make it pure and fresh. In Matthew chapter 21 and verse 19, there are scriptures in the doctrine of Christ and all over the Bible that speak to this. In Matthew 21, 19, the scripture that Brother Flavel referred to. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And of course, this was symbolic of the nation of Israel, not only the individuals in it, but the entire nation that the judgment of God fell on. And in Matthew chapter 23, we've talked a lot here recently in several teachings on the desolating judgment. And this is what was pronounced in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 38. He said, and this Matthew 23, it's the absolute showdown between the Pharisees and Jesus. And he said there in verse 38, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And there are still so many today when the desolating judgment was pronounced against the nation of Israel, there are still those that want to run to those uh, unregenerate rabbis and to the, to the, the things of the Jewish people in the flesh for their salvation and sanctification. And this, uh, you know, Jesus said it's desolate, and that's what he means. It is absolutely desolate. And when I teach something like this, I feel compelled of the Lord to do so, and I do, and it's always with a heaviness because I know that there are so many people out there that are struggling, and the devil torments you with the idea that you have committed the unpardonable sin and blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And this is one of the assaults that people are subjected to when they are in the barren state. And the way to overcome this, of course, uh, is to let the water in. In Matthew 12, verses 31 and verse 32, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto them. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. And we are going to talk a lot about uh, bringing yourself to feel and the deadness the emotional and spiritual deadness is one of the marks of the barren state and we're going to talk about here the the will of the father the father doesn't want to destroy you the father wants to heal you you see we just have to cooperate with him the father uh you know we all mess up you know we all mess up and uh all of, all of that. We hold on to things we should let go to. We're all guilty of that, you know. And the, the Father doesn't want to destroy you. He wants to heal you. He wants to heal and bring life to those stagnant places in your life. And all we have to do is just repent and let the water in. And we're going to be talking in uh, a lot of detail. We're going to have Brother Finney help us on uh, on this here a lot in the second part of the broadcast. But you see, this is a thing we want to keep in mind uh, the Father wants to fix us. He don't want to break us. Now, uh, 
John Flavel said this. He said, The plow pierces deep into the bosom of the earth, makes, as it were, a deep gash or wound in the heart of it. So doth the Spirit upon the hearts of sinners. He pierces their very souls by conviction. And this is what the preaching of the law, the preaching of the Word of God will do. You see, it's not for me to tell you you need to do this, this, or that, because I don't know what's in your heart. I can see what you do, but I don't know what's in your heart making you do what you do. But the Holy Spirit does, and the Holy Spirit can show you those areas in your life where you need to let the water in. And this is exactly uh, the way John Flavel compared the preaching of the word unto a plow that digs down and will bring up those places. It'll turn up the dirt and it'll let us all see those things that we need to to deal with. And in the book of Acts, chapter 2 and verse 37, it was the result of the first gospel sermon that was ever preached. In Acts 2, 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And I think this is what we all uh, say, you know, well, wow, we've got this mess here. What are we going to do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the, remiss for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We repent. That's what we do. And through repentance, we allow the water of God to come down into those stagnant places, and the Lord will show you. He's showing a lot right now, those places where we need to let the water in. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, we're going to look at the role the Word of God plays in this. In Hebrews 4 and 12, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Now the soul and spirit are those spiritual aspects that are with our body. And the soul is one thing and the spirit is another and they join together at a certain place and the word of God even goes to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. The word of God can show us those places that we have that we need to let the water in. And it is from the prophet Joel. The prophet Joel in chapter 2 and verse 13 and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. The Father doesn't want to destroy you. He wants to fix you. Now, we were talking in a recent lesson about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And we want to read that scripture again, and we want to read the scripture following that. In Philippians chapter 2, and let's look at verse 12, and let's also look at verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now let's read verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So you see we have two uh, sides to the coin, so to speak. We work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, but yet it is God that is working in you. You see, and if God is not working in you, all of your attempts to work things out are going to fail in such a pitiful manner. But you see, the Father begins things in every child of God. He is working in each child of God to bring us closer to Him and to bring us to a place of maturity and a place of uh, walking in the straight path. And, you know, this can only happen we do all that we can do, but yet it is only through cooperating with what God is doing in us that this can be achieved. So be be encouraged. We are 
working out our salvation while at the same time God is working in us and when the Father is working in us he wants to get those stagnant places with some fresh water in them so we just need to cooperate and not let that barren state spread but let the Father correct it in Revelation chapter 3 beginning in verse 2 be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die now boy that's a solid verse isn't it and you see there are many people that there are certain aspects of their spiritual life that at one time were alive and thriving but sad to say they are now dead it's not about what relationship with God you had 20 years ago or five months ago it's where are you at right now in your relationship and there is such a thing that there are people that have had certain things die off in their life, but there are certain things remain, and they're getting ready to die too. And we need to strengthen the things that remain and let the water of God flow into our heart because this is the deadly danger of the barren state. This state can overtake you, and it can take you to the place where you are reprobate silver uh, before you leave this earth. And these things from the Word of God and these things, this is, uh, and that was Jesus speaking there in the book of Revelation. And in verse 3, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. You know, repent, repent, repent. Just open your heart. Let the water of God in. That's all we got to do. And yet people will harden their hearts. They'll hold on to those dirty pools. And uh, it will, sadly to say, it will result in uh, many people becoming reprobate silver. In Job chapter 14, uh, beginning in verse 7, For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth, and wasteth away, and giveth up the ghost, and where is he? And when a man dies, as a tree falleth, so shall it lie. But you see, there's even hope of a tree, that even when it's cut down, that you can water it and bring it back. So how much more is there hope of us? And if you're out there and you feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your heartstrings and the devil saying, well, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, it's a lie. The devil is not going to move upon your heart to get you to repent and deal with the stagnant water in your life. But the Holy Spirit will. And the devil's a liar, and you just... You just yield unto him, and you're not you're not thrown away. You're not no good. You're you're not just something to be trashed and thrown on the trash heap, you know. And the devil says, "Well, you'll you've messed up." And sometimes I just have to agree with the devil, and say, "Well, yeah, you're right. I have, but I know the one." that died upon the cross for my sins, my goof-ups, and for all of it. And uh, I'm not going to stay down. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to let the water of God come into my heart and my life, and we're going to get up, and we're going to go on with the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16, For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. And when you see your brother stumble and fall, you're not supposed to all get around and kick him. No, that's really not what you're supposed to do. But we're supposed to encourage one another and lift one another up because even the just man, every person's life, there is no believer alive that lives their Christian life without experiencing uh, the shortcomings and failures because this is what we learn by in the book of psalms in psalms chapter 130 and i love this and of course i love them all don't i in psalm 130 
and I want to read verses 3 and 4. The text says here, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Yeah, and if every time we messed up, if the Lord would mark it and not take that mark away, who'd be standing? Nobody, nobody would be standing, would they? But in verse 4, But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. So, be encouraged. In Psalm 23 and 3, it says, He restoreth my soul. The Father does not want to destroy you. He wants to heal you. He wants to water your soul with the living water from the throne. Now, we're going to take a break, and in the second part, we're going to get specific. We're going to get specific. We're going to have Brother Finney help us, and we're going to talk about literally how to deal with with those stagnant pools of water. So we'll be right back in just a, in just a few moments on the FOJC Remnant Gathering. We have much to offer here on FOJCRadio.com. Most listeners are familiar with our radio page where we're live on Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time and in, it includes our chat room where listeners can fellowship and read the scriptures that I post while Brother David's teaching. If you can't catch us live, we offer our podcast page with the latest audios of our remnant gatherings or the same audios are made into videos and now videos on two new video channels. The easiest way to find our new channels is to go to our ministry news page on FOJCRadio.com. On that page, you'll find links to our new channels uh, on Varidion and the Underground Church FOJC. And there's also links to our Doctrine of Christ series on Jimmy Vision and our Vault series. This makes it a lot easier for you to get the information with just a click. You'll find if there's going to be any events, we have though that information on there. And we have um, a link to our free books and lots of other info. The latest info is on the ministry news page. I've tried to include answers to frequently asked questions on our Hot Topics page. We also try to help our listeners find local fellowship in their area with the Remnant Locations page. And for those who struggle with abuse issues, I offer my Ritual Abuse and Healing page. Our contact page has a short order form, some links for your love gifts, and of course, our contact information. On our Resources page, you can find a list of our books, CDs, DVDs, free Bible studies, and tracts that can be printed or read. Check out our online Bible school or our music page. Both include easy-to-click audio files. And most important is our God Wants to Save You page. If you need help in leading someone to the saving mercy and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, there are plenty of uh, things to choose from on that page, including a little prayer that I wrote uh, to help lead people to accepting the Lord and inviting Him to be their Lord and Savior. It's all there, all free, so please use these many things that we offer on our website. We appreciate your support and have tried to make our site easy to navigate. But if you have a problem finding something, just email me at lastdayschurch at cs.com and I will be happy to help. Blessings to all our listeners and thanks again for your prayers and encouragement. Now back to tonight's message with Brother David Carrico on FOJC Radio. Welcome back to the FOJC Remnant Gathering. And as I always do at the break, I want to thank each and every one of you that studies with us and that prays for us and that supports us with your gifts and with your kindnesses. We do appreciate it. We thank you from the very bottom of our heart. 
Now, and also I want to say, Sister Donna says that she has updated the preparation page. Do we have any preppers in the house? Just raise your hand. Ah, I see those hands. So, yeah, uh, Sister Donna has updated the prep page with a few things that uh, might be good to see if you've got in your prepper closet. So, we're going to get back into our lesson, and uh, I'm going to begin by... Uh, reading something else from John Flavel. Uh, Brother Flavel said this, and this is so true. Uh, the work of repentance and saving contrition is set forth in Scripture by this metaphor of plowing. And we have to plow our hearts with repentance. And just like the plow will turn up the ground to where you can see what's underneath it. So the work of repentance, it plows our heart, and it turns things up to where we can see the areas that we need to let the water in. And always, something I always say is that people always do what they want to do. And the key to getting free from any bondage is repent to the place you hate it. And there's more to, you know, that's uh, just generally the bottom line of it. You know, there's strongholds, there's spirits, uh, there's curses and a lot of stuff. The devil can get into details, and there can be details from the devil. But the bottom line is, whatever you're doing that you shouldn't do, when you repent to the place you hate it, you won't do it anymore. And until you do that, you will do what you want to do. And it's through the plowing of the heart and letting the Lord rearrange the very desires of our heart, this is the thing that uh, really brings in the fresh water into those stagnant places. Now in Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Now we could break right here into the parable of the sower with Jesus, couldn't we? Uh, we did an entire DOC on that, and this is the whole symbolism that Jesus was using with the parable of the sower. He goes on, Jeremiah says, Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the four skins of your heart, ye men of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire, and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. And Jeremiah said, you plow your heart or you're going to reap the fury. You see, we are responsible. We are responsible when the word of God comes unto us and when uh, ministers are faithful to preach the law of God that we know where we do fall short. We are responsible for plowing our hearts and letting the water in. In the prophet Hosea chapter 10, and verses 12 and 13, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. It's all right there in that verse, isn't it? We break up our fallow ground, that ground in our heart that's become hard, and uh, it's it's got all those marshes and those miry places. And then if we will break up that fallow ground, he will rain righteousness, and this living water will come down if we'll just plow the ground up, the Father will send the water, and those places that were once stagnant and stale, they will become fresh and beautiful and bring forth a great harvest. Now, let's get a little help here from Brother Finney. And I want to read uh, from his book, Revival Lectures. And it's interesting. Uh, he gave these teachings in New York City during the heart of the cholera plague in New York City in the 1800s. And I did a whole teaching on this, on the uh, the way that Finney dealt with the time of plague. And, it, and at that time, they really didn't know that cholera was coming from polluted water. And he actually almost died of cholera. And he had to leave for about two months to regain his health. He come right back. He got sick again, almost died again. Well, 
the Lord healed him, and he just kept going. And it was during this time in New York City of the height of the cholera epidemic that at a uh, at a building there in New York City, he gave these series of teaching called Revival Lectures, and um, quite a different spirit uh, from that which we see today. But I'll read a few things of what he had to say. Now, uh, he says, To break up the fallow ground is to break up your hearts, to prepare your minds to bring forth fruit unto God. The mind of man is often compared in the Bible to ground, and the word of God to seed sown therein, the fruit representing the actions and affections of those who receive it. To break up the fallow ground is therefore to bring the mind into such a state that it is fitted to receive the word of God. You have to come to a place in repentance to where you're no longer going to argue and fight with God. You're not going to say, you know, well, uh, I'm going to hold on to my old uh, stagnant ground. You've got to come to the place where you plow it up and you say, you know, Lord, wherever you want to send that water, we'll just take that water and we'll just let it bring life to anything you want it to touch. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. You see, and if we will receive the word of God, it will work in us. But we have to plow our hearts up. You see, uh, receiving the word of God is not a spectator sport. It's not like um, we are doing this this evening instead of watching uh, Bowling for Dollars on TV. You know, we are getting the word of the Lord, and we have to be ready to receive it. And whatever the word says... We say, okay, Lord, we'll just take that and we'll receive it and we'll plow up the ground and we'll let you send the water. And this is how we do. And we have to prepare, like Brother Finney said, we prepare our hearts and minds to the place where we are willing to receive that rain upon us. Now, Brother Finney goes on to say this, if you mean to break up the fallow ground of your hearts, and make your minds feel on the subject of religion, you must go to work just as you would to feel on any other subject. If you mean to break up the fallow ground of your hearts, you must begin by looking at your hearts, examine and note the state of your minds, and see where you are. Examine thoroughly the state of your hearts and see where you are, whether you are walking with God every day or with the devil. It comes from examination. And this is what the word of the Lord tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 7. And you see, this isn't me telling you, uh, well, boy, this ain't, uh, you know, you need to do this, 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 that, and that, and that. This is the Holy Spirit showing you what you need to do. It's above my pay grade. I mean, you know, some things are obvious that we should and should not do. But, you know, we're talking about them little stagnant pools that are down there. And they're way down. Uh, they're off up in the edge of the woods. You know, we're going to have to put forth a little effort to get the water on them. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, the scripture says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves, how that Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And there's that same word, we heard it earlier in the book of Jeremiah, that the people in Israel that did not repent under the prophetic word, that they became reprobate silver. Now, Brother Finney says, to examine our hearts. Now, the spirit of the age is this. And um, here is, uh, I'm going to read from Charles Stanley, his book, Eternal Security, Can You Be Sure? And on page 13, Mr. Stanley says this, people who are constantly examining their spiritual condition tend to fall into the trap 
of legalism. Now, Charles Finney says the only way you're going to break up your fallow ground, that's to examine yourself. The Bible says to examine yourself clearly, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Charles Stanley says, nah, you better be careful. You examine, you start examining yourself all the time, you're going to fall into legalism. Now, you're to the place where you're either going to believe Charles Stanley or you're going to believe the Bible. And this is the spirit of the age. The spirit of the age tells us that uh, you know the greasy grace, once saved, always saved, that permeates all of the mass, not only of American religion, but much of that which is spread all over this good old flat earth of ours. But we've got to come to the place where the Bible says, examine myself, I don't care what these knuckleheads say. We're going to do what the Word of God says, and we're going to do what men of God of old did that really made a difference, that when they preached the Word of God, that people's lives were actually changed. Now, Brother Finney said this, and here is one of the things. Um, ingratitude. Ingratitude. The Scripture says, uh, well, I'll read what Brother Finney says. He says here, you have received favors from God for which you have never exercised gratitude. Set down the instances of God's goodness from ruin to which, excuse me, set down the instances of God's goodness to you when you were in sin. I tell you what, I know there were times when I could have easily died before I came to Christ because of the crazy stuff I was doing multiple times for which you have never been thankful enough, go on your knees and confess them one by one to God and ask forgiveness. And this is the very spirit of the age, unthankfulness. How much do we take for granted all those things? I mean, I, that you know, that just speaks to my heart so much. I could tell you stories, which I will spare you from, uh, out of the kindness of my heart, where the Lord spared me when he could have very well let me die. I bet that most of us have those stories. In Second Timothy chapter 3, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And there are so many people that when the Father has delivered them from things, and they will never openly glorify God for it. In Psalm chapter 50, verse 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. When the Father delivers you of something, whether a healness, uh, a healing, or a delivering, or of whatever, you're to glorify God for it. And if you don't, you're in sin. This is the spirit of the age of unthankful ungratefulness that uh, it, it is just wrong. And it's time people have got to plow up their fallow ground. Now, Brother Finney goes on to say this, and this is kind of a no-brainer, but uh, this is something we see so much of. Um, and he deals also uh, with neglect of prayer, which is another real no-brainer, isn't it? But he also deals with the neglect of the Bible. He said, and Finney says, when you examine your heart, get you a piece of paper out and write these things down and then pray over them. He says, put down the cases when for perhaps weeks or longer, God's word was not a pleasure. I mean, and it's not just, you know, and I used to, love to read the Bible through every year. I don't study like that anymore. And I actually read it through four times in one year. And I love it, love it, love it, love it. And you see, here again, people do what they love to do. And if you love God's Word, you're going to want to read it. And for me to say, when you hear people say that, you know, I'm a Christian, but I just don't, you know, read my Bible. I read it, you know, a month ago. I read a little bit. You know, this just isn't right. It's not right. And if you do not love God's Word, and today there are so many things, you can get uh, the Bible on CD and listen to it. There's no excuse. You know, there's YouTube. no excuse. YouTube. None, so none, none, none. And... Um, if you love the to say you love the the Lord and you don't love his word, 
Nah, I ain't going for that. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. And just like that newborn baby longs for its mother's breast, a newborn child of God will long for the word of God. It's just the way it is. So I tell you what, if you don't love the word of God, you better do some quick and serious plowing, and you better examine in your heart whether you even front slid uh, to be able to backslide. Now, Charles Finney also said this, uh, and he said this on page 43. He said, Slander, the times you have spoken behind people's backs of the faults real or supposed, of members of the church or others, unnecessarily or without good reason. This is slander. You need not lie to be guilty of slander. To tell the truth with a design to injure is slander. Now, boy, there are some words worthy of meditation, uh, isn't there? And this is another one of the real spirits of the age that the devil wants to get people caught up in. And while we're in the neighborhood, uh, one of the things he also said was censoriousness, as in to censor someone. He says, instances in which you have had a bitter spirit and spoken of Christians in a manner devoid of charity and love. And uh, these are the are the things that we have to be so careful about. And it doesn't mean that we, we can't call out sin. We have to. And we have to call out false doctrine. And I can say, you know, Charles Stanley, on page 13 of his book, uh, he said you got to be careful examining your heart. And, boy, this is leading a whole lot of people into not doing it. But yet I can't judge Charles Stanley's heart. You know, and always when we see false teachers, people will ask me, well, do you think that person's sincere? I have no way of knowing I, it's above my pay grade to judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. That belongs to the Father. But I can judge what they do. And we must speak to open sin. We must speak to uh, false doctrine. But yet we must leave the judging of the heart to the Father. Now, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 7. And this is the chapter on charity. And notice I did not say love. <laughs> charity. We know what charity is. That is the true meaning of agape, love. Now, uh, love, if you just say, I got love, man, that brings in a lot of different um, nuances of meaning, doesn't it? But that's another whole show. But in First Corinthians thirteen seven. Charity beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. And when someone says something to me, the the love of God will move all believers to try to take it in the best light we can. Not to put the worst spin on it, to try to let our vain imaginations run away with us. But we want to believe and hope the best of people until we have a serious reason not to. Now, something else that is very serious, uh, and there is uh, when a person does have a problem with someone else th that is really eating them, Matthew 18 is the way to do it. Now, a person really shouldn't have to do Matthew 18 three times a week, you know. I mean, we should hopefully grow up to the place where we can bear offense uh, without feeling we have to do that all the time. But that's there, and that's there for a reason. And uh, we use Matthew 18 rather than talk behind people's backs. Now, another very serious thing, and this is one of the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus uh, chapter 20 and verse 16 in one of the Ten Commandments it says this thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor and I want to get a little help here from Thomas Watson and in his book on the Ten Commandments Thomas Watson said this about bearing false witness 
He says the scorpion carries his poison in his tail. The slanderer carries his poison in his tongue. Slandering is to report things of others unjustly. And as Brother Finney said, even things that are true about people can be used for slander. He goes on to say, the wounds of the tongue no physician can heal. And to pretend friendship to a man and slander him is most odious. Jerome says the Aryan faction made a show of kindness. They kissed my hands but slandered me and sought my life. As it is a sin against this commandment to raise a false report of another, so it is to receive a false report before we have examined it. And we're talking about the Ten Commandments. We're talking about uh, people that willfully break these things that the barren state will absolutely overtake you unto damnation. I want to read a few things from William Perkins. William Perkins is the father of Puritanism. Uh, and this is just a little bit. They, they had a big deal about the Ten Commandments and Puritans did. But I just want to give um, a few. These are worthy of so much more, but we'll just give you a little once run through the roses here he says uh, the on the this commandment he breaks this commandment that uh, who does but conceive a thought of disgrace against his neighbor who envies at the prosperity of his neighbor who seeks only his own good report who is suspicious who gives a hard and rash sentence against others who takes men's sayings and doings in the worst part who accuses one falsely, who makes or reports tales openly or in a whispering manner, who receives tales, who speaks the truth of malice, who blazes abroad men's infirmities. And, you know, we've all got infirmities. You know, if I would be around you or you around me for a few hours, we would see each other's infirmities uh, and things that just ain't perfect. You know, we all got them. And a lot of people, I will see them do this. And this is damnable. This is terrible. It, this is just, it, you know, it's damnable. He goes on to say, who uses flattery, who lies, though it is ever so good and end oh yeah who can defend an evil cause and impugns the contrary who writes or spreads libels and every one of these he had scriptures with but there's kind of a quick once over uh, of some things we need to hear every once in a while don't we we sure do now i want to get back um and read something else here from brother flavel and i want to read something jesus said of uh, in john chapter 3 and verse 19, and uh, things that are said behind the back, uh, I always say if a person can say something behind someone's back, they can say it to their face. And uh, John chapter 3, verse 19, uh, Jesus said, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and man loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And people that don't want to come in the light and uh, they just want to sow their little works in darkness, uh, you know, these are just exactly very explicitly from Christ. They are the works of darkness. Uh, John Flavel had this to say. We'll read. Uh, he said this on page 58. And this is a, a very serious thing. As obvious, you know, we're talking about, uh, when we talk about the barren state, we're talking about something that should it persist, uh, it can overtake you and send you into a state of reprobation. And uh, we're talking about uh, many of these things that are causing the barren state. If they're not repented of, uh, they can result in damnation. Uh, and uh, John Flavel said this, Concerning the barren state, it is such a stroke of God upon the souls of men as immediately foreruns hell and damnation. Now, let me just say that again, that we're going to read some scriptures. The barren state, and it is a, 
it is such a stroke of God upon the souls of men as immediately foreruns hell and damnation. And when you are in the barren state, the next thing is reprobation. And this is the seriousness of it. And while the church today says, well, once saved, always saved, uh, the popular doctrine that when you sin, you don't even have to repent of it, uh, a teaching like this uh, from real men of God and from what the Bible clearly says, it sounds strange and falls strange upon the ears of people. Now, in Hebrews chapter 6, and let's read verse 8. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 8, But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. And when the ground isn't plowed, and briars and thorns are coming up, let's read that again, Hebrews 6 and 8. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, that is the same word, reprobate, means rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. And this is exactly what Jesus said in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 15, John chapter 15, beginning in verse 6. If a man abide not in me, and remember we started out this teaching with John Flavel saying that those rivers of water were the doctrine of Christ. Oh boy, that blessed me right there. That fixed me up right there. Uh, and Jesus said in John fifteen six, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now, this is just a message of great good news because, hey, all we got to do is just put the plow down. Just put down the plow, let the rains come, and let those uh, wilderness places with the thorns and the briars, let the Lord bring forth a beautiful garden within our hearts. That's all we got to do. And we can't do it. We can, we can do the repenting and the plowing. And if we will do that, the Lord will send the rain. And uh, let's close out with um, three scriptures. And this is kind of our game plan. Um, let's look at Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 1. In Second uh, Thessalonians 3 and 1, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And this is what we want your prayer for us to be, that the word of the Lord have free course, that it go into the hearts and lives of people, and that it become a plow and an instrument of the Holy Spirit. And um, we we read something, I think, last week from um, George Swinock, another one of the Puritans, where he perceived of, uh, I, I believe... He compared the preaching of the Word of God to actually painting a, a picture upon the hearts of people. Such a beautiful way to look at it, but this is it. Just pray for us that the Word of the Lord have free course, because that's what we want to do. We want to give the Word of God out in the gospel. It's the gospel that will change people. If you do not know Jesus, if you just repent and believe the gospel and place your faith upon what Jesus did for you upon the cross as payment of your sin debt, 1 Corinthians 15. Jesus Christ died for us. And when we uh, are born again, we become dead to that sin nature. And to continue in a state of deadness to the sin nature, we have to abide in that by faith. So that's the only way you can overcome sin is by dying to it. You cannot overcome it through uh, works of self-effort. After we die to sin, yeah, we've got our part to do, but we can only break that bondage by faith in the cross. And we put out the Word of God. That's why every week I want to give uh, uh, the Scriptures, give the Word of God out uh, in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 and 11, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth bud, 
bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. And the Lord wants to send his word to water your heart, just like that rain waters the earth. And that's what we do. We understand uh, that we can't change you, but if we give you the word of the Lord, that he can change you. That word and your yielding unto the Spirit of God in your heart that can. I'm going to share one more scripture here. And Sister Donna has uh, something she believed the Lord's laid on her heart to share with you before we close out this teaching. I want to close uh, with Psalm 126 and the 6th verse. Psalm 126 and 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen and amen. Come to my fountain. Nourish your lives with the river of life. Let me heal those hidden places in your souls. Let me break through the dam that is holding back my waters. Your water has become stagnant and has a scum on top of it that hides what needs to be cleaned. These gifts I gave to you are still there. They need to be washed and stirred up so that I can use them for my glory and to edify my church. Dig deep, for what you have hidden is corrupting your walk. Listen to my heart as you study my word. It will give you life and cleanse your hearts and souls. Don't be afraid to jump in the waters. Even if you do not know how to swim, I will hold you up and wash you and wipe away your sins and hindrances. I only ask that you seek me with all your heart and repent and renounce those things that are keeping you from serving me with all your heart. The weeds have entangled you, but I will cut them away and set you free. The false teachings you have absorbed can be cleansed from your mind and my true teachings will be able to be absorbed but you must be willing and ready to receive what I am ready to give you I am ready to make you ready I am what I am I can do all that I have promised come to my fountain and be cleansed by my waters invite others to join you I will be waiting on you to heed my call. Well, as always, we want to close out the broadcast this evening with great thanks to each and every one of you uh, that joins us for the FOJC Remnant Gathering. Uh, tomorrow night, John and I will be uh, in the Now You See TV studios doing the Midnight Ride tomorrow night. It's going to be one of them hootie bob bobbers. Uh, it's going to be called the Pyramid Builders of Edom. And uh, it's going to be quite the ride, I guarantee you. So with that and with our heartfelt thanks to all of you, let's close out in a word of prayer. Father, we just come thanking you for the goodness that flows from you and your love and desire to see us all build up and cleansed and restored and have the good things of God shed abroad in our heart. So, Father, just uh, we just want to open up our hearts to you and let you send the rain and just revive our souls. Revive us again, Father, and uh, let your living water bring life to our innermost soul. And, Father, we just do want to give you praise for anything good that happens in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and we agree amen and amen God bless you all and we will see you next Friday night 6 p.m. Central on the FOJC Remnant Gathering Thank you for listening and joining in fellowship with us here at FOJC Radio Remnant Gathering You can contact us at 
FOJC Post Office Box 671 Tell City, Indiana 47586 or you can email us at lastdayschurch at cs.com or you may call us at 812-836-2288 you can check out our website at www.fojcradio.com thanks and God bless